I had a couple of questions about uh, Betamax machines, how they load and how they unload, and there's a couple common problems, so I figured I'd go over a couple of the different variations of the 711B chassis. So, there are two that were really quite common in the 711B, and they operate completely differently, so I figured I would show both of them because I have both units on my bench. This is uh, going to be a quick video on uh, Sony Betamax. This is a uh what they call the 711B chassis, which was one of Sony's most common chassis that they had. They had the 711, or sorry, the 710 chassis, which was used in like the SL5000, 5010, 5020, SL5200 series, which used the loading arm that went around uh, this way. I think, it was, no, it was this way. It's been so long since I've looked at one. Had a single arm that pulled the tape out like this, around this way. Then they came up with the 711 chassis, which was used on the 2500 and the 2700 and the SL2000. And then this is the 711B chassis. That was followed by the B2 and the B3. The B2 and B3 had nothing to do with speed. It was just the chassis itself. But this is by far the most common of the Sony um, chassis. And this one's actually on an upcoming video that I'll be working on soon. I'm actually, it's in production now. I'm in the process of troubleshooting this one. It's been quite quite the dog. It has a servo problem and I'm digging up, trying to dig up some service manuals to chase down a problem in the head switching. It's switching at the wrong point, but that's beside the point. Uh, quite a common problem on these machines is that they refuse to load. So for example, when you try to load a tape, you put a tape in and they just sit there and they do that. And then they kick the tape back out again. This is a real common problem on these. You have to understand how these Sony machines operate. So there's two things that are used to detect if there is a tape in place or not on these machines. On this one, there's a physical switch. It's located right back here. And it's operated by this little cam. Now what this switch does is this switch, this little cam moves when the mechanism is in the fully loaded position. For example, if I turn off the power and I operate the mechanism by hand, and turn the loading gear all the way into position you will see that this cam is going to move this little adjustment there's, there's a little adjustment here this is what I'm getting at this switch should be in the closed position right now and what this does is this tells the mechanism whether the tape is loaded or not and right now when it's unloaded that switch should be in and sometimes this cam gets a little bit out of position so when I finish the loading of the mechanism here, we will see that that will actually move. Like that. Okay, so now it's supposed to be open. But the thing is, that switch is supposed to be in the closed position. That's what tells the mechanism that the tape is ready to be loaded. And as you can see, it didn't complete it didn't operate the switch so if I adjust this ever so slightly to click that switch in now when I load the cassette the solenoid should release and it will load the cassette this uses one loading motor and the loading motor is right here to operate both the front loader as well as the mechanism itself. This is a power split device. So depending on what position this solenoid is in, see when I click it into play and stop, that solenoid does two things. One, it engages the controller. The other thing it does is it switches the power split device. So when I press the eject button, you'll notice that it will kick in, or it won't kick in, it'll kick in when it's going to eject the tape. So what that does is, by the nature of how power split devices work, you've got a sun gear, a ring gear, and a planet carrier. And your sun gear is the input from the motor. The planet carrier under here spins this gear. and the ring gear spins the belt which operates the mechanism. That's one 
mechanism that Sony used. There's a couple different variations of this this chassis. So the switch down here, this is the loading end switch. And of course, there's another switch right down here called, guess what? The, lo the unloading end switch. If that one is out of position, you'll also have some loading issues. So let's make it out of position so you can see what happens. How this switch operates right down here is it operates when the mechanism is fully unloaded. That's what tells the solenoid to change positions and transfer power. If this switch, for example, is stuck, we'll make it stuck. Let me grab something that I can make it stick with. So if I push that switch into position so that it thinks the unit is in position, it will do that. So if you turn on the machine and all it does is run the rewind motor and then it loads the tape like that and then tries to unload. And then loads again. And then unloads. You've got a stuck switch because that switch there is what signals what is going on. That's another really common problem. So what can happen to that switch? Well, it can get physically stuck. It's just a little pin, and also the switch can get dirty. The little metal arm on here could actually bend over the years, but it can physically get stuck. And if it physically gets stuck, it won't work. Also, the switch itself can electrically, the contacts can go bad. So this switch is one that you really do need to check. If you're having loading problems, especially if it's doing what it was doing there, where it's loading and unloading, loading and unloading, um, check that switch. Check the switch at the back here as well. Those are the two main switches. Now that's on this specific mechanism. There is another one. I'm gonna see if I can dig up one of my own machines just to show you that one. I just happen to have this machine here on the bench. I'm gonna go grab another machine and we'll look at, I think the other one's a little different than this one because some of them use the tape end sensor over here, the coil. It, get, it gets moved by the pinch roller when it's in the unloaded position to signal that the tape is in the unloaded uh, position as opposed to a mechanical switch. So let me go dig another machine up. Here's another variation on the 711B. I believe this was the 711B2 chassis. A little different. You saw the other one had the metal lever on here. This one's got a plastic arm. It looks similar, but it's actually completely different. Note that this one does not have a switch down here to detect when the mechanism is in the unloaded position. It still does have a switch at the back here to detect when the mechanism is in the loaded position. It's right down there. These ones will experience a completely different symptom if the mechanism is in the loaded position and there's no tape in it. How this one detects when there's no tape and when it's time to kick the mechanism out. Oh, and if you guys have got sharp eyes, you'll see that there's a connector sitting right there. What that connector is for, this is one of my SL HF1000 machines. This is the one that the drum seized up on. So I did a transplant. I took a head drum from an SL HF900 and I put it into the SL HF1000. The big difference, of course, is the 900 is only a forehead. It does not have the flying erase heads. So I didn't bother to swap the head disc. I've still got the head disc and I've got the rotary transformer for the flying erase and if the head ever wears out on this I'll I'll pull the drum off and I'll pop the uh, the head drum the, the disc from the SLHF 1000 that was originally in here I'll, I'll, with the seized with the seized drum it's, it's the rotary transformer screwed on it. I'll uh, transplant that into this one and then I'll have flying erase heads again but this machine is strictly used only for playback for archiving so the loss of the flying race heads is of no consequence, so there's the connector there. Anyway, these ones use this little pickup coil over here. This is the one of the pickup coils. There's one over here, and there's one over here. And what this does is this detects when you're rewinding the tape, it detects the metal leader, just like the metal leader is detected by this coil when the tape gets to the end. Now, if we observe as I turn the mechanism, this is actually on a little pivot. It's actually controlled by the pinch roller, <clears throat> uh, half loading gear. If I move it, you'll see that it turns. You see, that's the normal position it's in. When you're ejecting the tape, 
and it reaches the end of its travel. There's a little cog down here that catches and moves. You can see it's right, right over here. It's a little cog that catches and it turns that. And what that does is it points the coil right here at the metal post. So it's using a metal detector. That is how it tells the unit that it's time to eject the tape. These ones behave completely differently than the other model. I'll show you. If I thread the mechanism with the power off, because I can't do it with the power on, on these ones here, the solenoid actually kicks in as soon as you turn on the power. But if I thread the mechanism to the fully loaded position, like that, and I turn on the power, nothing's going to happen. And if I press the eject button, nothing's going to happen. It doesn't do anything. And the reason it doesn't do anything is because there's no tape in it. If I try to push a tape in, nothing happens. Is that interesting? Nothing will happen. If a mechanism like this is in the loaded position, turn off the power and you have to wind it back manually all the way to the fully unloaded position. It won't load the tape or do anything unless it sees induction on that pickup coil. So we turn it all the way back now, and only now, it will actually load the tape. Now observe what happens. On these machines, when you turn on the power, it automatically pulls in the solenoid. So on these machines, if you don't hear a clunk when you turn on the power, it's a couple different things. It could be the regulator at the back here. That goes. You'll see the light turn on. The power light will turn on. Actually, the power light won't turn on. The clock display will light up. The time display will light up on the display. Your, your tape counter will light up, you'll hear no clunk, you'll see no green light on the front, and the solenoid won't kick because the 12 volts isn't being switched on by this regulator. This one's been changed. You can see the different color of heat sink compound because this one was changed on this one years ago. But when you turn it on, you'll see the solenoid will clunk, and then when I put in a tape, it will load the tape, the solenoid will trip, and it will thread. And now it'll operate. Go through all the modes. When I hit the eject button, it will eject. And as soon as that little sensor turns, it will eject the tape. So, what happens if that little sensor coil goes open? Well, it's not going to load a tape. It's going to sit there just like it did when I loaded the mechanism because it's looking to see that it's up against the, the metal post. If it can't detect that, if that coil goes open, for example, it can't detect when the tape gets to the beginning and it will break the tape. So the first thing it does as a self-check is it won't let you load a tape, unless there's already tape in it. But if there's already tape in it, the machine will know it. For example, if I release the mechanism here and push, push down the lock and push the tape in, nothing will happen because there's a little switch that has to be activated right there. When I activate that little switch, I didn't do it in time, there's a little switch right here that has to be activated. In fact, in fact, if I do this, if I load the mechanism, actually this is another way of doing this, I didn't show you guys this, because this switch also can give us trouble, so that's why I'm going through this. If you have a mechanism that's loaded, geez, it's been so long since I've worked on these things, I've forgotten more than I knew. That's terrible. Yeah, it really, it has been. It's been like I haven't worked on the, the the last beta machine I worked on was probably this one, or at least this of this design, other than the one I've got sitting in the shop now that I'm working on. Actually, I worked on one thousand not that long ago. Put a new pinch roller in it. But anyway, um, right now if I turn it on, nothing's going to happen. Can't eject the tape. Can't do anything. Right. But if I push in here, if I push down on the inner one, you see the two switches. The ones for to detect if the tab is broken off the tape. That's the record tab and this is the cassette down. So if I press this one down and turn on the power, now I can press the eject button and it should eject. I lied. I actually have to um, have the cassette basket down to do that because there's another switch on the cassette basket over here. I think if I if I unplug this one it probably will work. I'll just I'll just push the cassette basket down. It's checking all the switches. So the cassette basket needs to be down. So if I just turn the cassette basket down. Okay, now if I press with the mechanism down, if I press the switch here, so it knows there's a tape in it, it will eject. 
So how these machines operate is there's a switch here that tells it when you've pushed the tape in. And that little switch is right there. And they, the contacts do get dirty on these switches, so you gotta check those out. Little switches right down there. There's a cassette down switch right here, right? There's the loading completion over here, and then there's the unloading completion, which is the coil. If I want to load one of these machines without a tape in it, I can just press down this little little plastic lever, which is what locks the, the cassette mechanism. Push that down so I can push it in. Then I have to tap that switch. I don't have to hold it, I just have to tap it. That will now complete the loading cycle. The machine now knows that there's a tape in it. Even if I turn it off, turn it back on, I think it'll eject, yeah, it will. As long as it's gone through the loading mode. Back to this other mechanism, on here there are switches on this one that need to be checked. This one does not have a cassette down switch, it's actually done by a switch that's activated by one of these plastic gears which have a tendency to break, by the way. This switch on here, this one's just for the cassette record lockout. Anyway, that's the basics on the beta mechanisms for the beta fans out there that love this old stuff. Thanks for watching. We'll be doing a follow-up on this one once I figure out what's wrong with it. So right now the guy that owns it is away for Christmas, so the pressure's kind of off for a few days, but I will be back on this one and we'll see if we can get this one nailed down. I've got it mostly working, but it's still got some issues that I gotta work with. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.